Welcome to yet another episode on petroleum refining. Today we are going to talk about petrochemicals, an important aspect of downstream petroleum industry. What are we going to cover today? Today we are going to talk about the definition of petrochemicals, role of petrochemicals in nation building, the different petrochemical groups and then different routes for manufacturing different kind of petrochemicals. And we will also talk about the different applications of petrochemicals and finally about the key petrochemicals and their specific aspects. This is what we are going to cover today. What is a petrochemical? Petrochemical refers to all those compounds that can be derived from the petroleum refining products. It can be seen that petrochemicals are produced from simple compounds such as methane, ethylene and acetylene. But generally petrochemical does not refer to the multi-component products such as naphtha, gas oil, etc. So these compounds like gasoline, diesel, naphtha, they are all multi-components. So it is a mixture of several hydrocarbons. But what we are going to cover today is petrochemical which will have a specific formula, right? So it is a single component system. So that is where petrochemicals differ from the refinery products such as naphtha, gasoline, diesel, asphalt, etc. Petrochemicals are the chemicals that are made from petroleum and natural gas. And the role of petrochemicals is immense in nation building. About 5% of the oil and gas consumed each year is needed to produce different kind of petrochemical products. But petrochemicals play a vital important role on our food, clothing, shelter and leisure. So in fact, from morning till evening, we use a different kind of products and in every product there will be an application of a petrochemical product. Because of the low cost and easy availability, oil and gas are considered to be the main sources of raw materials for most petrochemicals. What does it mean? We also have some alternate source of manufacturing different kind of petrochemical products. What are they? Let us see. And when we talk about petrochemicals, they are primarily bucketed under different groups. For example, C1 group. C1 group means petrochemicals having one carbon atom. Starting with uh, methane, then syngas, which is a mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen and uh, synthesis gas derivatives. Then the second one is C2 group. So primarily the ethane family and uh, the derivatives. Ethane, ethylene, ethylene derivatives and acetylene. Then C3 groups known as propane, propylene and propylene derivatives. Then C4 group, butadiene, butanes and butenes. Then C5 group, pentane, pentane isoprene, cyclopentadiene. So these are all part of C5 groups. And finally, we have aromatics. So generally, C6 compounds known as benzene, toluene, xylene, naphthalene or BTX derivatives. BTX stands for benzene, toluene and xylene. If you see the different sources of manufacturing petrochemicals, either petrochemical can be manufactured from a gaseous source or liquid source or solid source or a biomass source. The gaseous sources range from natural gas, condensate, refinery gases, coal bed methane, gas hydrate, etc. On the liquid side, we have raw materials such as naphtha, solvent extracts and metal distillates. Then when we talk about the solid sources that would cover coal, coke, wax, residue. So apart from these natural resources, then we also have another resource known as the biomass that is agricultural residue, algae, etc. Now let us try to understand how the petrochemicals are manufactured from different sources. What are their routes? This is a very important slide. So as you see on the top, we have three major sources. 
one is coal crude oil and natural gas and what are the different kind of processes being employed to get the intermediate petroleum product and the final petroleum product the very first step is if you are using coal then the gasification is the prime process if we talk about the crude oil distillation is the process then natural gas means the gas processing and uh, through these processes uh, the outcome or the intermediate products that comes out of uh, these processes are syn gas from the gasification of coal refinery gases or naphtha from the distillation of crude oil then methane from the gas processing of the natural gas if we talk about uh, refinery gases it covers a range of uh, gases known as uh, methane ethane butane propane etc then we have the cracker products so uh, the as a next step then by cracking all the intermediates we get ethylene propylene c4 stream or reformate or pi gas and uh, the final petroleum product should be methanol polyethylene ethylene oxide acrylonitrile polypropylene propylene oxide butadiene benzene toluene xylene etc so actually the list is not exhaustive if you want to list down all the petrochemical products time will not be sufficient since this particular subject is dealing with petroleum refining we are only going to talk about some of the important petrochemical products so now let's see the different applications of petrochemicals so first mtbe which stands for methyl terebutyl ether so which is used as a fuel additive to improve the octane number of gasoline then polyurethane polyurethane is widely used as a insulation material in air conditioners fridges etc then different kind of petrochemical resins are used in fabricating wooden furnitures then polymethyl methacrylate they are used for manufacturing transparent plastic slides then polyethylene which is quite commonly used by the common people for carrying food items so it can be either ldp low density polyethylene or high density polyethylene hdp then pvc pvc stands for polyvinyl chloride polyvinyl chloride is primarily used for manufacturing window panes and uh, the different kind of pipelines ethylene glycol is used for as a anti freezing agent in the your uh, automobiles vinyl acetates they are widely used in the manufacture of colorful paints then vinyl acetate is used in the manufacture of uh, adhesives polypropylene is used for manufacturing different automobile components then super absorbents are widely used in different kind of uh, diapers then nbr synthetic uh, rubber they find quite common place in the manufacture of tires then abs plastics abs stands for acryl butadiene styrene so abs plastics find a role in the manufacture of uh, computer components then acrylic fibers we have then sand fibers are used for manufacturing of uh, the common electronic items or white goods phenol is used in uh, construction industry to a great extent acetone finds a place in the manufacturing of different kind of cosmetic products propylene glycol plasticizers solvents these are all some of the other petrochemical products then again once again butadiene rubber and butyl rubbers they are used for manufacturing tires then n butane is manufactured then we have polycarbonate which are used for manufacturing items like uh, the compact disc then abs kind of plastics they are used for manufacture of uh, telephone or telephone products then we have polystyrene nylon find a place in today in uh, uh, the sports wear as well uh, the different kind of clothes polyesters find a place in uh, the textile material as well as uh, the bottles 
polyurethane is used in the upholstery materials and the PVC is once again used in the manufacture of electrical wires. Now let's try to understand the top global petrochemical companies. So you all may be wondering why at all we are talking about petrochemicals under the subject refining. Many a times the petrochemical complexes are an integral part of a refinery. So if you see some of the popular refining companies, they also have petrochemical complexes. Sometimes uh, the petrochemical complexes would be independent petrochemical companies, but uh, there are many occasions where refinery would be an integral part of uh, the petrochemical companies. The top 10 petrochemical companies across the globe are BASF, from Germany, Dow Chemical from USA, Exxon Mobil Chemical USA, Linde Basel Industry from Netherlands, Ineos from UK, Saudi Basic Industries Corporation, Sabic from Saudi Arabia, Formosa Plastic Corporation from Taiwan, Sumitomo Chemical from Japan, DuPont from USA, Chevron Philips from USA. These are some of the popular companies which are in the leading front of manufacturing petrochemicals across the globe. Now, if you see the Indian context, who are all the leaders in manufacturing petrochemicals? Reliance Industry, the largest uh, petroleum refiner across the globe, is also leading in the petrochemical manufacturing. Then we have Haldia Petrochemicals Limited, Indian Oil Corporation, so which has got more than 10 refineries across the globe. In many of the refineries, the petrochemical complexes are an integral part of the refinery. Then we have Gale, Gas Authority of India Limited, National Organic Chemical Industries Limited, Nozil, then Bungai Horn Refinery and Petrochemicals Limited, BRPL Limited, then Manali Petrochemicals, IG Petrochemicals Limited, the Andhra Petrochemicals Limited, Tamil Nadu Petrochemicals Limited. These are some of the top leading manufacturers of petrochemicals in our country. Now let us try to understand some of the key petrochemical products. First uh, methanol, methanol the raw material for methanol is syngas, syngas is nothing but a mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen and one of the manufacturing processes by distillation of the wood and hence methanol is also known as wood alcohol. So, of course, today this process is not followed. We have different kind of processes. Basically, methanol is a colorless, volatile and flammable liquid and it is poisonous for human consumption. So, there are many incidents where people have drunk methanol and lost their eyesight and finally lost their lives. So, that is why handling of methanol is a very important aspect and there are several regulations by government across the globe in handling and distributing methanol. The methanol is used as an antifreeze and as a solvent, many times used as a fuel blend with gasoline. Now let us move on to the next item which is known as formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is produced by catalytic oxidation dehydrogenation of methanol. Formaldehyde is best known for its preservative and anti bacterial properties. Formaldehyde basin resins are used to manufacture composite and engineered wood products. So, as I mentioned earlier, several resins they are all manufactured with the help of formaldehyde. Formaldehyde has use in manufacture of vaccines, anti infective drugs and hot gel capsules. It is also used in the production of many personal care and consumer items. Then we move on to chloromethanes. Direct chlorination of methane leads to a series of chloromethanes like methyl chloride, methylene chloride, chloroform and carbon tetrachlorides. And all these chloromethanes, they have an important role to play in their respective domain. Methylene chloride is used as an industrial solvent as well for home needs. Medical equipment can be quickly cleaned with the help of methylene chloride. 
I am not going in depth about each of the processes because the petrochemical is a complex subject and uh, time will not be available to discuss in depth about uh, the manufacturing processes of different petrochemicals. But as a refinery engineer, one should have a fair idea about uh, different kind of uh, petrochemicals. So that is the intent of uh, this module. We are only trying to address the key components of the petrochemical products. Then we move on to ethanol. Ethanol is a clear colorless liquid and the principal ingredients in all alcoholic beverages. It can be produced either by plant fermentation or through the hydration of ethylene. Ethylene is a common ingredient in many cosmetics, beauty products, sanitizers and food additives. In many countries, ethanol is also used as a fuel blend with gasoline so that the pollution level can be greatly reduced. So that is where even some of the refineries they have a ethanol manufacturing plant as well ethanol blending plant so that the fuel will have less impact on the pollution front. Then we move on to ethylene dichloride, toxic chemical, highly flammable and possibly carcinogenic, especially by inhalation due to the high vapor pressure. So it is definitely going to impact our health. Ethylene dichloride is one of the intermediates for vinyl chloride monomer, which polymerizes to polyvinyl chloride or in short known as PVC. So ethylene dichloride has got a huge impact in the manufacture of polyvinyl chloride or PVC. It is used as a degreaser and a paint remover, but um, most of the places it is now banned from use due to its uh, toxicity and a possible carcinogenity. Ethylene oxide. So the important use of ethylene oxide is the sterilization of medical equipment, including the sterilization of personal protective equipment used by the doctors and hospitals. Ethylene oxide is also used as an intermediate in the production of other chemicals used to manufacture products such as fabrics for clothes, upholstery, carpet and pillows. Then we are going to talk about styrene. This derivative of benzene is a colorless oily liquid, although age samples can appear yellowish. Styrene compound evaporates easily and has a sweet smell, although high concentration have a less pleasant odor. Styrene is the precursor to polystyrene and several copolymers. The most important products are solid polystyrene expandable polystyrene, styrene butadiene latex, acrylonitrile butadiene styrene, terp polymer, unsaturated polyester resins and styrene butadiene rubber or in short SBR. The next one would be acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde is one of the important petrochemicals being the raw material for acetic acid, acetic anhydride and acetate esters etc. In 1962, ethanol and acetylene were the major sources of acetaldehyde manufacturing but since then ethylene is the dominant feedstock. Isopropyl alcohol also called isopropanol is a colorless flammable chemical compound with a strong odor. It is used in the manufacture of wide variety of industrial and household chemicals and is a common ingredient in chemicals such as antiseptics, disinfectants and detergents. Cumin also known as isopropybenzene or phenylpropane is a colorless volatile liquid with a gasoline like odor. It is a natural component of coal tar and crude oil and also can be used as a blending component in gasoline. Almost all cumin is consumed as a chemical intermediate in the production of phenol and acetone. So that is the major use of cumin. Then we are going to see about propylene oxide. This is a colorless volatile liquid with an odor resembling ether. 
the major application of uh, propylene oxide is in the use of the production of polyester polyols for use in the making of polyurethane plastics then we have butadiene butadiene is a building block chemical used to make synthetic rubber it is a colorless gas and has a mild gasoline odor mtbe so already we talked about mtbe it is used in the blending into gasoline to increase the knock resistance and to reduce unwanted emissions so it is primarily used as a gasoline blender but uh, earlier tetraethyl lead was used as a gasoline blend tetraethyl lead has got a lot of side effects it has been replaced by mtbe then finally when we talk about uh, the aromatics we have the strong combination of uh, petrochemicals known as btx btx stands for benzene toluene and xylene benzene toluene xylene are commonly referred as btx most bts production is based on the recovery of aromatics derived from the catalytic reforming of the naphtha in a refinery major usage of uh, benzene is for the production of phenol and styrene benzene is also used for the manufacture of aniline and sulfonated detergents toluene is primarily used as a solvent or chemical or detergent and finally xylene is used as a high octane blending fuel so today in this episode we try to give a overview about petrochemicals we have not gone in depth about petrochemicals because many a times petrochemicals uh, they are totally independent of uh, petroleum refining business but uh, there are many occasions where petrochemical complexes are an integral part of a refinery so that's why we included this topic on petrochemicals today we try to understand what is known as petrochemicals the role of petrochemicals petrochemical groups and uh, the route for manufacturing different kind of petroleum products what are all the sources and what are the different kind of processes and how do we arrive the intermediate products and from the intermediates how we finally got the final end petroleum products and we also try to understand the role of petrochemicals in our day to day activity so that is the different applications of petrochemicals and we also try to give a overview about the top 10 global petrochemical companies as well as top 10 indian petrochemical companies and uh, we quickly try to understand uh, the different natures of uh, the key petrochemical components so i hope this will give you an idea about uh, petrochemicals and their role in the refining business in yet another episode we will discuss about uh, the different aspect of petroleum refining until then bye Thank you all